Hello, how are you today? Today, I am going to read to you a book called No Monkeys, No Chocolate. Um, and we're reading it to learn a little bit more about how chocolate is made and the importance of taking care of our Earth because this week we are celebrating Earth Day. And it's important to make sure that we are taking care of our Earth because we want to be here and enjoy all of the things that we love about being outside for as long as we can. So um, I hope you enjoy. I'm going to share the book with you now. Okay. No Monkeys, No Chocolate by Melissa Stewart and Alan Young. Chocolate chip cookies, chocolate ice cream, moist fudgy brownies. What makes all these desserts so delicious? Chocolate, of course, but you can't make chocolate without cocoa beans. Cocoa beans are the seeds of the cocoa tree. Cocoa trees grow naturally in the tropical rainforests of Central and South America. But today, farmers grow them in other tropical areas too. To make chocolate, workers spread cocoa beans with rakes and dry them in the sun. Then they roast them in a giant oven. Later, machines smash the beans into a thick paste and squeeze out the liquid to make cocoa powder. It gets mixed with a variety of ingredients to make different kinds of chocolate. You can see they are raking the cocoa beans to dry them. Cocoa beans cannot develop without cocoa pods. Cocoa pods are the fruit of the cocoa tree. They look like small lumpy footballs growing on the tree's trunk and main branches. Inside each pod, white gooey pulp surrounds 30 to 40 cocoa beans, just enough for one candy bar. Cocoa pods can't form without cocoa flowers. When pollen from one cocoa flower lands on another cocoa flower, a tiny tube opens up inside the blossom. Pollen travels down the tube. As soon as material inside the pollen combines with material deep inside the flower, a new cocoa pod begins to grow with seeds inside. And midges. Before a female midge can lay her eggs, the little insect needs a hearty meal of rich, nutritious cocoa pollen. To find food, she crawls deep inside a cocoa blossom. As the midge climbs out, pollen sticks to her body. When she lands on another cocoa flower, some of the pollen falls off and lands inside the blossom. Cocoa flowers can't bloom without cocoa leaves. As the cocoa leaves soak up the sunlight, they make sugar, and sugar travels through veins of each leaf to the tree's branches. When sugary sap flows through the trunk to the rest of the tree, that's how a tree gets the energy it needs to live and grow and make flowers. And maggots. As soon as a leaf cutter ant spots tender new leaves on a cocoa tree, the little insects race to reach them. While the hardworking ants slice up the leaves and carry the pieces back to their nest, female coffin flies land on the ants and lay eggs inside their heads. When the eggs hatch, tiny maggots wriggle out and eat the ants' brains. Cocoa leaves can't survive without cocoa stems. A cocoa tree's trunk is a thick central stem made of wood. Its branches are smaller woody stems. The tree's smallest stems connect to leaves to branches. All these stems transport minerals and water from the tree's roots to its leaves. The leaves need minerals to grow. They use the water to make sugary food for the whole tree. And lizards. Aphids are little insects that jab holes in a cocoa tree's soft green stems and suck up the sugary juices inside. But a hungry anole is nearby. The little lizard skitters along the tree's branches eating aphids and other insects. Cocoa stems can't grow without cocoa roots. A cocoa tree's roots suck up water from the soil. They also absorb minerals such as calcium and iron. The stems and the rest of the tree need these materials to live and grow. Roots also hold the cocoa tree in place. 
you see all the different roots. And fungi. Fungi live in the rainforest soil. As they grow, tiny root-like threads called hyphae spread out in every direction. The hyphae bump into dead plant or animal. They release chemicals that break it down. Then they absorb the rotting bits and digest the minerals the fungus needs to live and grow. The extra minerals pass out the lymphae into the soil where they can be absorbed by the roots of nearby cocoa trees. Cocoa pods, flowers, leaves, stems, and roots could not grow without cocoa beans. The, if a cocoa bean lands in just the right place, a tiny root pushes down into the soil. Then a slender shoot stretches up towards the sky. As time passes, the little seedling grows into a tree. When it's about five years old, the cocoa tree begins producing flowers and fruit. Some cocoa trees live up to 60 years. And monkeys. Monkeys yank pods off cocoa trees, gnaw holes in the fruits, and pull out the stick sticky insides. As the monkeys travel through the rainforest, they suck on the lemony pulp, lime pulp and spit out the beans. Cocoa pods never fall off cocoa trees. If monkeys and a few other animals didn't scatter cocoa beans on the ground, new cocoa plants couldn't grow. Cocoa and rainforests. On traditional cocoa farms, workers plant cocoa trees in neat rows with only a few kinds of trees shading them from the sun. Under these conditions, fewer than 5% of all cocoa flowers produce pods. Recently, scientists discovered that cocoa trees produce more pods when they grow in patches of thinned out rainforest, where many other kinds of trees provide shade. These cocoa groves are the perfect home for the midges that pollinate the cocoa and the coffin fly maggots that attack leafcutter ants. They're also great places for lizards, monkeys, and other rainforest creatures to find food. Hopefully, more cocoa farmers will begin growing trees in rainforest cocoa groves. In the last 30 years, more than 40% of the world's tropical rainforests have been destroyed. At that rate, rainforests could grow be gone in 50 years. Cocoa groves do more than provide us with a steady supply of cocoa beans. They also give many different species of rainforest plants and animals places to live. These are some of the things that you can do to help the rainforests and Mother Earth. You can turn off lights and computers when you're finished. In the winter, you can put on a sweater and keep your house a little bit cooler. In the summer, you can use air conditioning only when necessary. You can take shorter showers and you can make sure that you turn off the water while you brush your teeth. You can encourage your parents and you to remember to re use reusable bags when you go to the grocery store or any other store. Um, you can recycle things like bottles and cans and paper at home and at school as well. You can compost your food. Um, and you could even plant a tree. Thank you for joining me and learning more about cocoa beans and the rainforest and the ways that we can work together to make sure that our earth stays very healthy. I'll see you next time.